Hey everyone, it's caffeine scientist, author, and speaker, Green Eyed Guide here. Today we're talking about coffee versus energy drinks. Which is better for studying? This is the topic I covered in a YouTube episode back in 2019, and to this day it's still one of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel. However, that video has some flaws. So today I'm going to recap the three most important things you need to know about using caffeine for studying and the three things that you can do if you're using caffeine to study. So information, then action. And I'll throw my three favorite fun facts at the very, very end. But let's dive right in. Ready? Let's go. All right. So if you don't know me, let me just give you a brief bio. So as I mentioned, I'm a quote unquote caffeine scientist. What does that mean? Well, I studied food science and biochemistry in school, and essentially I've been studying caffeine and energy drinks for about 20 years. I've written the book, Are You a Monster or a Rockstar? A Guide to Energy Drinks. That book talks about energy drink ingredients, whether they work, whether they're safe, and then I also wrote the book, How to Get Shht Done When You Feel Like Shht. That book is more about caffeine and mental health. It's a comprehensive caffeine strategy to help boost your mood and your ability to focus when you don't feel your best. So that's a little bit about me, but let's dive right into our topic, coffee versus energy drinks, which is better for studying. So here are the three most important things you need to know. First, don't get too wrapped up in the other ingredients. There's a lot of energy drinks and even some coffee-based drinks now with nootropic ingredients, ingredients that are supposed to boost your cognitive performance. The question is this. We know that caffeine helps your cognitive performance, so do those other ingredients support or sabotage caffeine's work? This was kind of the premise of my 2019 YouTube episode, and I got way too fascinated with the theoretical science behind things like taurine and B vitamins and carnitine and even theanine. But really, that doesn't matter. Don't get too wrapped up in the other ingredients. If, and that's a big if, if those ingredients are in your caffeinated beverage in significant doses, do they make a significant difference if you compare that recipe versus caffeine alone? That's questionable. Maybe those ingredients have some promising research when they're used alone, but that's not the same thing as being used in combination with caffeine, especially when we already know caffeine does a lot for your cognitive performance. Which brings us to important thing number two, caffeine does all the work. It doesn't matter where the caffeine comes from. As a recap, caffeine improves your vigilance, which is your ability to pay attention when you're bored out of your mind. Caffeine improves your attention, which is your ability to sort signal from noise. And caffeine improves your alertness. So if you're staying up at midnight and you haven't slept in a while, caffeine will help you stay awake and keep studying. That's how caffeine helps you study. And it doesn't matter whether that caffeine comes from a coffee or a tea or an energy drink. Now, the ideal amounts for caffeine and cognitive performance are 100 to 200 milligrams. Doses higher than that can actually make it harder to focus because you, you become overstimulated. So that can actually sabotage you having too much caffeine. And important thing number three, exam time is not the time to be experimenting. I get so many comments on that YouTube video with people saying, I have an exam in a week. What should I drink? Should I drink a Red Bull or should I drink a coffee? And my advice is always the same. Don't try something new right before an exam. You want to know how your body's going to react to caffeine and how it's going to react to those other ingredients. So don't try anything new leading up to an exam. 
stick with what you know, stick with what you've been using and stick with what you know how your body responds to. Furthermore, everyone responds differently to caffeine and that's without all of the other ingredients in a drink. So that's even more reason to not experiment just because something might be working for your roommate or your spouse or your partner or your colleague, whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are gonna get the same response. So don't be experimenting up into exam week. So those are the three things that you need to know. Let's quickly transition to the three things that you can do if you're using caffeine for exams. Here's your three actionable tips. Number one, watch out for using caffeine as a procrastination tool. Watching the coffee brew, driving around the block to find a new energy drink you heard about on Instagram, those are not gonna help you study. So be careful that you're not using coffee or energy drinks or whatever as a reason to procrastinate for your studying. That's actionable tip number one. Actionable tip number two, watch out for the caffeine and the sugar amounts. Again, I mentioned the ideal amounts of caffeine for focus are between 100 and 200 milligrams. Those are the ideal doses of caffeine. The ideal doses of sugar are from zero to 25 grams. Combinations of caffeine and sugar can actually make you more tired than caffeine alone. This is according to a paper called Sugar Rush or Sugar Crash, a meta-analysis of carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrate effects on mood. That was published in 2019 in the journal Neuroscience and Biobehavioral Reviews. In short, if you're using caffeine to study, make sure you consume between 100 and 200 milligrams and less than 25 grams of sugar. And actionable tip number three, there's a way for you to kind of hijack your brain and create these habit loops, these placebo effects, to help you do better in an exam. For an example, there's a paper called The Impact of Coffee-Like Scent on Expectations and Performance. This was published in 2018 in the Journal of Environmental Psychology. In that paper, they found that people in an exam room that was pumped to smell like coffee helped people do better on their exam because those people had that expectation, coffee equals studying or coffee equals focus. And so that, that smell alone helped them do better on their exams. So there's a way that you can hijack your study routine. If you always have a particular caffeinated beverage, whether it's coffee or Red Bull, and you always take a sip of that to, to try and help you remember to breathe, right? Slow down and focus on what you're learning, focus on what you're doing. If you build those caffeine routines, those habit loops, then you can help, you can use those habit loops to help you do better in exams. For example, when I was studying biochemistry, I would always have, always have a can of Red Bull with me when I was studying. I had my Red Bull, I had my half-baked Ben & Jerry's ice cream, and that's how I memorized metabolic reactions in biochemistry. And so what did I do walking into the exam room? I had my can of Red Bull with me because in my brain, I had associated studying biochemistry with drinking Red Bull. And so bringing that can of Red Bull to the exam room, even though it was closed, mentally helped me focus, kind of like a security blanket. So if there's a caffeinated beverage you particularly enjoy using while you're studying, and you can also bring that to your exam room, that can help you because of that placebo effect, because of that psychological expectation. So that's a really sneaky little trick that I've used and that you could probably use when you're trying to use caffeine for exams. I hope this was helpful. If you're using caffeine for exams and you have any particular questions on particular beverages, please email me at info at greeneyedguide.com. You can also find a list of all of my favorite caffeinated beverages if you go to greeneyedguide.com slash freebies. Look for the quote unquote energy drink report card. And in that energy drink report card, you'll see a list of all of my favorite energy drinks, the ones that I like the most and the ones that I tend to use the most. So I hope this was helpful. Again, good luck on exams and till next time, take care.
All right, bonus round, time for three fun facts. Fun fact number one, I already kind of mentioned that uh, the scent of coffee makes people perform better in exam rooms. So I found that really interesting. That's fun fact number one. Fun fact number two, taste is actually the number one key influencer or the one number one key driver why people pick the drinks that they pick. So for example, there's a lot of coffee beverages and energy drink beverages now coming out with nootropic ingredients, but really it's the taste that makes people pick what they pick. That is the number one reason people pick what they pick. Yeah, they might try a new beverage. They might try something that they've seen their friends drink or that they've seen on YouTube or say a very popular celebrity comes out with an energy drink. They might try it, but if it doesn't taste good, they're not going to stick with it. So I found that really interesting because all of these beverages are coming out with nootropic ingredients promising it's going to give you all this brain power, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't drive consumer decision. That's fun fact number two. And fun fact number three, yeah, if you have high combinations of sugar and caffeine, that can actually make you perform worse than the caffeine alone. There is no such thing as a caffeine crash. Caffeine doesn't do anything quickly. It takes a while to kick in and it takes a long time to leave your body. So if you are crashing after an energy drink, it might be because that drink had a lot of sugar in it. And so your blood sugar is spiking and then falling. And that's why you're feeling so poopy afterwards. So again, that's my third fun fact. Thanks for geeking out with me and enjoying the caffeine science. Thanks for sticking around for this, this bonus session. And yeah, till next time, take care. Thanks for listening.